All right, I think we're ready. What is up? Welcome to or back to my channel. I'm Bridget and I read some books. In the month of June, I read some books, so I wanted to talk about it. Please, somebody tell me why I am wearing this sweatshirt when it is 97 degrees outside. Is it actually 97? I kind of made that up. Oh, it's 98. Can you see that? 98 degrees outside. Don't worry, it's like 70 inside. So, I just pulled out my book journal to uh, look at my June TBR to see if I actually read any of the books. I only picked five and I only read two of them. But that's okay. That's like, that could be, that could be worse. I had a pretty good reading month in June. Not horrible, definitely not the best. I read six books and here's what I thought about them. The first book I read was Flawless by Elsie Silver. I gave this one like 4.5 stars. This was so close to the five stars for me. It was such a fun read. This is the first book in the Chestnut Spring series and this one is about Rhett and Summer. And Rhett is a bull rider and Summer works for like the manager management firm agency, whatever that like manages him. And he gets himself into a little bit of trouble. So she is sent to like go basically babysit him and keep him in line. And honestly, this book was just so much fun. This is like your classic small town cowboy romance. It's grumpy sunshine, forced proximity for sure. Also the plot twist in this one, Honestly, like the more I talk about this, I kind of want to make it a five star, but I think I'm going to stay solid with my 4.5, but I would highly, highly, highly recommend this. And I'm so excited to read more of her books. Okay. The next book that I read in June was How Does It Feel by Janine O'Reilly. This is the Infatuated Faye book one. I, again, I really liked this book. This is like a fantasy romance, kind of definitely more heavy on the fantasy than the romance, I would say. And I gave this four stars. I buddy read this with one of my friends. We used the Storygraph app. And if you've never like buddy read on the Storygraph app before, highly recommend it. I feel like I've like heard about this book so many times on TikTok. Like I remember one specific TikToker doing like a reaction to like this book and like the plot twist of it which honestly pretty accurate, like the plot twist was kind of crazy and I wasn't expecting it. I also wasn't like reading too deeply into it, um, but this was a really fast read and I loved how everything tied together. And like by the end, basically everything had been explained. This is book one of the Infatuated Faye series. I haven't read book two. Um, I definitely will pick it up eventually. So this is about Callie Peterson. She's a biologist and she moves to a specific area and starts to work at like a state park to research moths. So she's like researching and doing all that. So like that's how it kind of like starts. And she ends up going into the fey world and things just start unfolding from there. They mistake her for like a spy basically. Of course, she runs into a fey prince and... I'm sure you can imagine where things go from there. This was fun. And again, the plot twist got me. Good one. Next, I read The Villa by Rachel Hawkins. This one was pretty like highly anticipated for me because I had read The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins and I really liked it. So I was hoping to also really like this one. And honestly, it kind of just fell flat for me. Um, I rated this 3.5 ish stars. I think it was just kind of slow. I also haven't read a thriller in a while. So I think because I haven't read one in a while, I had high expectations. And so maybe that's like making my rating be a little bit lower. I like the premise of the story and I like the way that it was written, but it was just a little slow. So this is like dual perspectives going back and forth in time between in current time, two best friends end up going to Italy for the summer to write it's like a little writing retreat and they stay in a house that has like 
a murder history. Back in the 70s, there was a famous rock star who stayed at the house or at the at the villa. Uh, there ended up being a murder at the villa. And so one of the friends that's there starts to like investigate the murder that happened at the villa. And so then it goes back in time also to talk about Mari, one of the sisters who was also at the villa in the 70s when there was the murder. And so we're getting like her diary entries at the same time as um, the like main girl from present time is like figuring all of this out. It was good. Obviously there's some like drama happening with the best friends and finding out the truth between like the murder back in 1970s. It was good. It was just slow. I just wish it was like faster paced. I feel like that's what I expect out of a thriller. It was faster paced, but this one was definitely more. I liked the storyline, but not the best thriller that I've read. Next, I read Not In Love by Allie Hazelwood. I tried filming a like only reading new releases vlog video and that video kind of flopped because I, you'll see from like the next book that I talk about, but I talked about this more on there. I don't know if I'm ever gonna publish that video, so. I guess we'll just go into it now. This was released on June 11th. So like super fresh, super new release. This is a little bit different to Allie Hazelwood's like typical books. She adds like a little disclaimer in the beginning that their relationship between the two characters, Rue and Eli, um, starts off physical and then they form a romantic relationship. But I love this. I love the way she explains why their relationship starts off physical and I think she like explains it well and gives the characters enough of a like description. It's like we get to know the characters well enough to where like that makes sense and like I'm not surprised by this. Um, and I really feel like I knew the characters. I felt like I was falling in love as they were falling in love. So in this one, Rue is a biotech engineer. So basically like a food engineer, I'm pretty sure. And she is specifically like doing food science stuff. And she's working for a company where her like boss and the owner is a, one of her really good friends. And then another company comes in and like buys that company, like buys their loan. Eli ends up being like part of the partners of that firm that bought the loan. And so now they're like taking over the company. I don't know. It's like a frenemies to lovers situation, enemies to lovers. Also, he falls first in this one. I feel like I'm not hyping this one up enough for as much as I like, I liked it. I think I gave it 4.75 stars. Follow me in Goodreads. But I said, this was so close to being a five-star read. I just think that the plot twist could have been plot twistier. So this was a fun, I'd say a fun summer read. Read this. And it's not like particularly summery, but it's still a fun summer read. The next book I read was The Summer Escape by Jill Shalvis. Okay, I read it on my Kindle. Before we talk about it, look at my cute little Kindle cover case thing. I made it. It's just like a quilted little thing and it has a snap on the top. And I'm obsessed with this. Summer Escape. And this book, I gave two stars. But this is a part of the like standalone series, the Sunrise Cove series. So it all takes place in like the same setting all of them and this is number six I don't know if I said that number six of the series and I read this book because I was trying to film a new release like only reading new releases video and I wanted to read something that like was outside of my comfort zone and new and different and that was this for sure this is like a cozy summer mystery is how I'm describing it there's definitely a subplot of romance but that's not like the main plot yeah, I read it on my Kindle because I wanted it to be like, go quickly. Low key, this book kind of put me in a slump a little bit because I didn't want to read it. And I'm not good at like DNFing books. I don't like to DNF books. And so I just like stopped reading for a while because I was reading this book. Don't know if I recommend it. I guess if you're like literally looking for a cozy mystery, maybe. That's just like not really my genre and not really my thing. Anna and her older sister 
find a coin in a box left over by her dad that had passed away or their dad that passed away. And the older sister was like, go get it, like go look into this, see like if it's worth anything. And so she takes it to a pawn shop or a coin collector place, whatever. And they tell her like it's worth $10,000. And so she ends up being on the news for it. And then someone comes to her work and is like, hey, where'd you get that coin? I'm pretty sure you stole it from my great aunt. And so that guy and her basically team up to prove her dad's innocence where like he he comes in and he's like, no, your dad stole this coin from my aunt. And then she's like, there's no way my dad did that. Like he was a good person. He didn't do, he didn't do bad things. And so they end up teaming up and trying to figure out who did steal the coins and they're trying to find the coins. They work together to try to find it and it was fine. It was slow. It wasn't very exciting. I felt like a lot of times I was very confused on like what was going on, who were they talking about? And I also feel like the dialogue at some points was like hard to follow. Yeah, overall don't recommend it, but it wasn't horrible. But the last book that I read this month was uh, Heartless by Elsie Silver. So this is the second book in the Chestnut Spring series. This one, I gave five stars. I love this book so much. This is about the best friend of Summer from the first book and another one of the brothers. Amazon guy just looked at me and I'm trying to make the dogs not bark. This one was so much fun. I can't stop thinking about this book. Basically, uh, the oldest brother in the cowboy rancher family. Oh my God, I can't feel my foot. The oldest brother in the cowboy rancher family has a son. He's like five years old and he needs like the, the brother, the dad, needs to hire a nanny for the summer. And he's being super protective. And he's like, none of these nannies are good enough for my son. He kept asking Summer, the new like fiance to her brother, to his brother in the first book to be the nanny. And she's like, bro, I got a job. I can't do that. So she's like, I have an idea. And she called her best friend and her best friend comes in nannies. This was a good time. I love her. Her name is Willa. I want to be Willa when I grow up. I wrote down in my Goodreads review, follow me, it'll be linked below, why I loved this slash what you can expect. So super fast paced. I got through this book so quickly. They had a very emotional relationship before a physical relationship. Um, he falls first, again, love a he falls first. Witty banter, grumpy sunshine, small town, cowboy rancher, forced proximity, age gap, and there's probably more. I, the, I read this book, I don't know what to tell you. And this is book two in Chestnut Springs. I will be buying all the rest and I will be eating them up. But also I'm pretty sure this series is on Kindle Unlimited. So you could read it on Kindle Unlimited for free. Well, I guess for the price of the membership, right? Of those books, only Flawless and The Villa were on my June TBR. And I did not read anything else on my June TBR because I bought books and because I was like really mood reading. I figured while we were here, I'd also show you the books that I bought in June. I'm really trying to like buy zero books in July. Like hopefully I will be at zero. That's the goal. So first I did buy, I did buy these two books. How does it feel? And not in love. I bought these. And then I also bought the summer escape book on my Kindle. Another new release that I bought, trying to do it for that video that I never filmed or never, whatever, is The Next Mrs. Parish by Liv Constantine. I was really excited for this and then I started reading it and I just like, it wasn't it. Um, I'm only, I'm like soft DNFing it. I'm only on page 18. Honestly, I should give it a like a true try, but I don't know why I just can't get into this right now. So I'm reading anything else, but yeah, I got this one. Next, I got Half Blood and From Blood and Ash by Jennifer Armentrout. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, from, from Blood and Ash is a very popular series and I haven't read that yet, so I, I would want to and I really liked this cover. So I got that and then this one honestly just like <laughs> looked good, sounded good. It has like purple sprayed edges. Um, so I got these. So I'm pretty sure both of these are fantasy romance. 
And then I also got House of Ash and Shadow by Leah Stone. This is a book one, which honestly, shout out to anyone who puts the book number if their book is a series. Like, why did we stop putting it on every book? Yeah, those are the books that I bought. If you made it to the end of this video, subscribe. And make sure to follow me on Goodreads. It'll be linked below. And yeah, I think that's all that I have to say. I am excited for July. I want to read all of the books this month. I want to read so many books this month. Hopefully I will. I think that's it. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye. Bro, seven minutes of me just jibber-jabbering.